Hello and welcome to the Friday, October 25th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Santa Monica, California. Italian web application security company Shielder has blocked about a very interesting and dangerous vulnerability in the popular LSP4 XML library. This is an XML parsing library that is used in products like, for example, the Visual Studio Code XML plugin or the Eclipse Wild Web Developer plugin. Essentially, if you're parsing XML in particular, in developer tools like this, there is a good chance that you may be using the LSP for XML library. The issue here is an XML external entity problem. Now, XML external entities are really a feature, but a dangerous feature. With this feature, it's possible to specify an entity as part of an XML document that will be retrieved from a web server. So as the editor loads the XML document and parses it, it will reach out to the web server to download additional content. This in itself is of course kind of dangerous. For example, we could like forge requests that way, but that's not the only problem here with the LSP for XML library. The next issue is that in order to be more efficient, the library caches the content locally on the device developer's system. To save the content, the file name is derived from the URL that was used to retrieve the document without cleaning up things like dot dot slashes and such. So you will end up with directory traversal and you will be able to essentially upload a document to the user's workstation in an arbitrary location with an arbitrary file name, with the only restriction being that the developer has to have the ability to write in that particular location. And that of course then pretty quickly leads to remote code execution. All the attacker has to be able to do is find a location, find a file name where this file will likely then be executed. So in short, all a victim has to do is open an XML document using a vulnerable browser and that can lead to arbitrary code execution. A little bit of problem here is that this LSP4 XML library is used in various tools, like typically for these sort of library or component of vulnerabilities. So it may be a little bit difficult for you to figure out if a particular tool you're using is vulnerable. Version 091 is the one that has been patched. So if you are creating software with LSP for XML, make sure you are using this latest version and you are updating any tools that you have distributed. And Google announced that starting with Google Chrome 80, which is supposed to release in February next year, cookies will behave slightly different. The goal here is to prevent cross-site request forging attacks. Now, a while ago, the same site attribute was introduced for cookies in order to protect from these attacks. The problem with cross-site request forging is that a website can trick a browser to send a request to a third party website and with that request, any cookies that the third party set will of course usually be passed along, which then may authenticate the request that the user was tricked into submitting. Now, to prevent these attacks, the same site attribute was introduced for cookies, but it was optional. So by default, the cookie was still set, but a developer could specifically set the same site attribute to prevent this from happening. What's going to change with Google Chrome 80 is that now all cookies will be treated as if the same site lacks attribute is set. So any cookies will no longer be sent along if the request was triggered by a different website. Google Chrome is giving some advance notice here because this could break some single sign-on systems and 
things like that. But if you still want the old behavior, you can just set the same site none property for your cookie. But this will only be accepted if you also set the secure flag, making sure that your cookie is only being sent over HTTPS. And if you remember, I talked about the Galaxy S10 and Note 10 having issues with the under display fingerprint scanner getting fooled by various screen protectors and essentially allowing people to unlock these phones with arbitrary fingerprints. Well, apparently Samsung now has a patch available for uh, this particular vulnerability. It should first be rolled out in South Korea, basically home of Samsung and will shortly also be rolled out in other regions. Apparently the problem here is that as the original user enrolls their fingerprint with one of those screen protectors in place, the structure of the screen protector is mistaken for the fingerprint and registered. So now no matter who is pressing on the screen protector, always the same structure, the same fingerprint, so to speak, is being sent to the phone. And in diaries today, I wrote up a quick experience I had with buying a few Gigamon packet brokers off eBay that still arrived with the original configuration. Couple tips and so how to probably clean them better before you are reselling them. I'll actually follow up on this particular diary later with a more detailed analysis. If you have any insight or if you have any experiences like this to share, please let me know. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.